circulating charges. Now consider a uniform magnetic field B pointing into the board like this. Okay. Whenever we, uh, what you call, when cross marks are used, it indicates that field is pointing into the board. Okay, whenever there is a dot with a circle, it means that magnetic field is pointing out of the board. Okay, so here magnetic field is pointing into the board. Now, I will send a particle, okay, of charge Q, mass M and velocity V. Okay, right, I will send a charge Q, a particle with charge Q, mass M and velocity V into the magnetic field perpendicularly okay perpendicular that is magnetic field is pointing into the board like this and the particle is projected like this as that angle between them is 90 degrees angle between them is 90 degrees okay now when the magnetic when the particle enters into the magnetic field what will happen that f equal to right q into v cross b force will be acting since the angle between v and b is 90 degrees okay v b sin theta sin 90 is 1 so maximum force sideways diffracting force will be acting on the particle now what is the direction of that force direction is given by the Fleming's left hand rule we have seen mag now put uh, now look the way I'm putting my fingers okay magnetic field is pointing into the board velocity of the particle is towards my right okay now force will be acting upwards that is on this particle the magnetic force will be acting in a perpendicular direction like this such that because of this force particles path will be bent in the direction like this okay because the force is perpendicular the particle will try to move in the direction of the force this way now when the when the particle's direction has changed like this now what will happen velocity is now in some other direction okay magnetic field is pointing into the board the force direction also changes and force will be now perpendicular to the velocity at that instant it will be perpendicular again this bends the particle's path somewhat like this again the force is perpendicular whenever the force is always perpendicular to the direction of velocity particles path will be bent into a circle like this a particles path will be bent into a circle like this okay that is the magnetic field bends the particles path into a circle into a circle that's why the heading circulating charges okay right now force is always perpendicular to the direction of velocity this makes the particles path into a circle the moment is a circular path okay one force will come into our mind what is that centripetal force okay now centripetal force is not a new force okay here who is acting like centripetal force the magnetic force f equal to qvb itself is acting like centripetal force okay that is qvb equal to we all know centripetal force formula mv square by r mv square by r if i simplify this v and v gets cancelled radius of the circular path equal to mv by qb we get mv by qb we get okay means the radius of the circular path r equal to how much mv by qb okay now what is this mv momentum of the particle okay so radius of the circular path the path of the circle into which it has got bent okay right is proportional to linear momentum of the particle proportional to linear moment of the particle or you take this m also as constant radius is proportional to velocity of the particle we can say okay velocity of the particle okay next one q is charge of the particle is always a constant b it is v who are applying the magnetic field a constant okay mass of the particle also remains constant so radius is proportional to v we can write or radius is proportional to momentum of the particle also we can write okay right now next one the moment i say circular motion okay motion keeps on getting repeated what is the time taken to complete one revolution like this okay time period how do we get time period v equal to r omega is the formula known so angular frequency omega equal to v by r angular frequency omega equal to v by r so from this formula v by r equal to take this r to the other side bring this m by qb to the other side v by r equal to right qb by m qb by m this is the angular frequency of the particle angular frequency of the 
particle right in this circular path now look at this note one important point here angular frequency is not depending on the velocity of the particle it is equal to q b and m okay q by m ratio of the particle is a constant b is also is a constant means angular frequency is independent of the velocity of the particle okay velocity of the particle let particle move with high velocity or low velocity right it will move with a constant angular velocity okay now omega equal to omega equal to right 2 pi by capital t okay is equal to q b by m q b by m or the time taken to complete one revolution t equal to okay 2 pi m by q b okay the time taken to complete one revolution is independent of velocity of the particle or radius of the circular path let the particle move in a bigger circle like this or let the particle move in a smaller circle like this okay right it is not depending on the radius or velocity right it is depending only on the mass charge and b of the particle okay right how is this possible right particle moving with high particle if it enters into enters with high velocity what will happen okay v by r is constant here when radio when the velocity is high it will move in a circle of bigger radius okay when the velocity is less it will move in a circle of smaller radius but time taken to complete either this circle or this circle is always same it depends only on the q by m ratio and magnetic field Q by M ratio and the magnetic field. Okay, this is time period. Now, reciprocal of time period is frequency, we know. Reciprocal of time period is frequency. So, frequency nu equal to QB by 2 pi m, we write. 2B by Q pi m. This is called gyro frequency. Gyro means rotation. Okay, gyro or cyclotron frequency we call cyclotron frequency because in one particle accelerator called cyclotron particles move with this frequency only okay revolution frequency so it's known as gyro gyro means rotation okay or cyclotron frequency frequency qb by 2 pi m time period is 2 pi m by qb okay right this is about the circulating charges we have here okay now all when is this happening particles path is getting bent into a circle when when the particle is entering into the magnetic field perpendicularly when theta equal to 90 degrees all this is happening now we have to see what happens if the particle enters into the field at an angle other than 90 degrees magnetic field will be pointing into the board like this okay earlier we have sent the particle like this such that angle between v and b is 90 degrees now what happens if i send the particle like this what will be the angle between v and b here okay though i am saying this is 90 degrees because b is like this is even this is also 90 degrees only okay even if i send the particle like this this is also 90 degrees only why magnetic field is like this earlier i told you i am sending the particle in this direction so v and b are perpendicular now what is that i am doing i am sending the particle like this here also angle between v and b is 90 degrees only let me send it in any direction like this angle between v and b will be 90 degrees okay so when the particle is when the magnetic field is pointing into the board right on the board i cannot show you an angle other than 90 degrees okay all these are 90 degrees okay all these are perpendicular to the magnetic field only so we have to change the direction of the magnetic field itself so i will take the magnetic field not pointing into the board but along the board like this along the board like this okay now magnetic field is going from left towards my right now i'll send a particle of charge q mass m and velocity v now what will happen to the particle's path we have to see okay when particle enters okay making an angle theta with the direction of the magnetic field okay v is like this magnetic field b is like this okay it is making an angle theta with the direction of the magnetic field now when the angle is theta i have a, what you call i'll resolve this velocity into two components one is horizontal component other one is vertical component horizontal component and vertical component okay right horizontal component is we all know it is v cos theta okay it is v cos theta and vertical component is v sin theta 
vertical component is v sin theta okay right now v cos theta is in the direction of the magnetic field v sin theta is perpendicular component perpendicular to the magnetic field now what will happen we have seen in the formula f equal to q v b sin theta right if the mag if the velocity and magnetic field are in the same direction right theta equal to 0 degree sin 0 is 0 f equal to 0 okay here now look velocity we have split into two components one is v cos theta v cos theta is parallel component okay to magnetic field that is angle between v cos theta and b equal to 90 degrees sorry 0 degrees such that force equal to 0 means this component of velocity this part of motion will not get affected by the magnetic force okay now what will happen what what about this v sin theta okay v sin theta is perpendicular to the magnetic field when what you call theta equal to 90 degrees force will be maximum means maximum sideways deflecting force will be acting on the particle due to this component v sin theta due to this component v sin theta whereas v cos theta component gets unaffected means what here two types of motions are getting superimposed on the particle one is right straight line motion due to v cos theta it is unaffected by the magnetic field okay so particle tries to move in this direction okay with v cos theta without any effect but this v sin theta component is perpendicular to the magnetic field whenever velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field we have seen maximum sideways deflecting force will act and particle's path will be bent into a circle means circular motion is getting superimposed on the straight line motion like this okay now here what is happening now you take one one is it is like this one component is trying to bend the particles path into a circle another try another component is trying to pull the particle into a straight line the resultant motion of this is what okay particle if only perpendicular component is there particle will be moving like this if only <laughs> horizontal component is there particle will be moving like this both are getting superimposed the resultant motion of the particle will be like this okay particle will be moving in a circular path this way this is called helical path okay this is called helical path so particles path will be bent into a helix means it will be bending like this okay now remember when i we can draw the, on the board like this only it is not a cycloidal path it is a helical path like just like our ball point pen spring okay the particle will be moving like this okay in that straight line motion advancement is due to v cos theta component and the circular motion is due to v sin theta component both are getting superimposed particle will be going like this particle will be going like this okay right now here we have two compo two things two parameters to now study what are the the distance traveled by the particle in time one time period okay it is called pitch c of the helix pitch c of this helical path or helix okay and time taken to complete one revolution will be time period only because <coughs> time period is independent of velocity or radius of the path we have seen it depends only on the q by m ratio and b we have seen so the time period of the particle will be t equal to 2 pi m by qb 2 pi m by q only it won't get an effect it won't get affected now next one what is the radius of this helical path radius of the helical path r okay is one property we have to see and pitch c of the helix is another one okay radius of the helix is nothing but radius of the helix means that helical motion that circular part in that helical motion is because of v sin theta component isn't it so r equal to m v perpendicular by q b that is because of perpendicular component m v perpendicular q b what is v perpendicular v perpendicular is nothing but v sin theta that is equal to m v sin theta by q b we write r equal to means radius of the helix is equal to m v sin theta by q v okay m v sin theta by q v okay this is the expression for radius m v sin theta by q v we write m v sin theta by q v okay next one pitch c is the distance traveled by the helix in one time period okay the distance advanced distance moved by the particle now which component of velocity is responsible for that linear motion parallel component okay right velocity into time will give you what you call the distance mode so pitch c of the helix c equal to right parallel component of velocity v parallel 
parallel component of velocity v parallel into time taken to complete one revolution distance traveled by the particle in one time period we have seen means in capital T time period what is the distance mode velocity into time okay what is v parallel here v parallel is v cos theta so <laughs> right v parallel is v cos theta t equal to 2 pi m by qb so if we, the pitch c of the helix is 2 pi m by qb into v cos theta this is the expression for pitch c of the helix pitch c of the helix okay so whenever particle enters into a magnetic field at an angle other than 90 degrees okay particles path will be a helix helical motion means it is just like our spring motion okay it will be moving like this in this helical motion radius of the helical path is important okay radius of the helical path is important this is that radius and next one is pitch c this is also important what is radius mv sin theta by qb okay what is the pitch c 2 pi m by qb into v cos theta now some questions will come like this okay a particle enters into a uniform magnetic field b right making an angle a particle enters into a uniform magnetic field right making an angle theta such that okay it moves in a helical path okay that in that helical path radius of the helix is equal to pitch c means some particle is entering into a uniform magnetic field making some angle theta right when it enters into that uniform what you call it, uniform b making some angle theta okay what happened it moving in a helical path okay that radius of the helix is equal to pitch c in that case what is the angle theta he will ask okay what is the angle theta if the particle moves in a helical path such that radius of the helix is equal to pitch c okay the question is coming like this okay then what, what do we have to do okay radius is equal to the pitch c means okay m v sin theta by q b is equal to right 2 pi m v cos theta by q b 2 pi m v cos theta by q b okay now cancel out similar terms okay m and m gets cancelled m v m v goes off okay sin theta by cos theta sin theta by cos theta equal to 2 pi we get that is tan theta tan theta equal to 2 pi or theta equal to tan inverse of 2 pi tan inverse of 2 pi means 6.28 pi equal to 3.14 tan inverse of 6.28 if you verify it comes to around 81 degrees approximately theta is approximately 80.5 or something like 81 degrees okay so when the particle enters into a uniform magnetic field at an angle theta right at an angle theta equal to somewhere around 81 degrees right it moves in a helical path where the radius of the pitch radius of the helix is equal to its pitch c okay this is one way you can expect some problems okay and another one and in other way the magnetic field is not uniform magnetic field is not uniform but it is a non-uniform magnetic field non-uniform magnetic field may suppose say magnetic strength magnetic field as we are going into that field path is magnetic field suppose say b value is continuously increasing okay at a rate db by dx okay means as you are moving along x direction b value is found to increase it is a not a uniform magnetic field it is a non-uniform magnetic field okay in that case what will what will happen okay what will happen as when r equal to mv by qb the motion is helical path only no doubt okay but as b value keeps on increasing radius of the helix will keep on decreasing radius of the helix will keep on decreasing similarly as b value keeps on increasing right pitch c also will keep on decreasing okay if b value is continuously increasing in a non-uniform magnetic field okay radius value radius of the helix will keep on decreasing like this will keep on decreasing and pitch c also keeps on decreasing like this this is means if b value is continuously decreasing means the field particle is going from stronger field into a weaker field then what will happen radius of the helix will keep on increasing pitch also will keep on increasing like this
okay these are the two special cases we can expect right in this topic this is what we known as circulating charges theta equal to 90 degrees will give you a circle theta other than 90 degrees will give you a helical path okay so i'll stop here okay in this lecture we'll continue the remaining topics in the next video to come okay thank you